morning everyone! Welcome to String and Story. My name is Holly and Knight and it's my job to guide you to quilt with confidence. Welcome back to Quilt Your Own Adventure week three. Three? There you go. I have to give you some contrast so you can see those fingers. Um, we are talking about four patches and nine patches today. I gotta, I gotta just stop with the hands guys. I'm distracting myself. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm so glad that you're here. I apologize for being late. We are leaving on vacation Saturday morning and my brain is in entirely too many places. So many places. All right, let me get this pulled up over here on my screen. Let me make sure that my computer is muted. We don't need feedback. Here we go. I see some of y'all hopping on. Good morning, everyone. I'm so glad that you're here. Um, as I said, welcome back to Quilt Your Own Adventure. We're talking about four patches and nine patches today. Go ahead and check the top caption or wherever the caption is on your screen to see if you were last week's winner. Um, Angel, you want a copy of Anxious to Adventurous 10 Weeks to Fabulous Free Motion Quilting, my ebook. Um, and there is a question of the week in there. This week's question of the week is a little bit different. I asked you about your favorite family vacation because I'm getting ready to go on vacation and I have vacation on the brain. It's all I can think about right now. Um, <laughs> I'm going to try to rein it in and think about quilting, but go ahead and answer that question. Um, to be entered to win a very special giveaway, my friend Francis O'Rourke Dowell. Woo, that contrast is like seriously lacking. I want you guys to be able to see the hang on. I'm going to move the light so you all can see this beautiful book. Francis worked way too hard on this for you to not be able to see it. There you go. Margaret Goes Modern is probably reversed for you. Um, by Francis O'Rourke Dowell. Francis is a good friend of mine. If you listen to the Off Kilter Quilt podcast or the Quilt Fiction podcast, you're familiar with her work. And I talked to Francis a few weeks ago and I said, Francis, I'm going on vacation. I'm going to be gone for a week. And the week before, I want to make sure I do a nice special giveaway um, in anticipation of me being gone to give a little extra special something to you guys. And I'm going to be reading Margaret Goes Modern on the Beach. I bought this book when it came out several months ago and I've been holding it and waiting patiently for my beach vacation. So you won't actually get to read it with me because the giveaway doesn't end until after I get back. But you've got two weeks to enter this week. So go ahead and answer that question in the comments for a very special opportunity to win a copy of Margaret Goes Modern from Francis. So thank you, Francis. By the way, I should say thank you um, for being a part of today's class here on Facebook Live. Also, you'll notice in the caption of the video, the very last link I included today says about Francis. And that is a Friday Friends interview that I did with Francis, um, oh my gosh, a year and a half ago now, almost two years ago. Um, but I looked over it this morning, it still has so many great things for you to read about how Francis is a writer and a quilter and her process of design for both, and also about the importance of community in quilting. Now, before I go on anymore, good morning, Denise, good morning, Veronica, good morning, Trudy, good morning, Teresa, good morning, Deborah, good morning, Amy, good morning, Friday, good morning, Lori, Deborah again, Gina, 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 thank you for my rotary cutter. That was such a special treat to get in the mail. Guys, I love all the splash cutters so much, so this was super exciting. So Gina sent me a little treat this week. Good morning, Sandy. Good morning, Robin. Oh, so wonderful. Okay, so before we go on any further, as you're answering that question, I'm going to hit share over here. I'm going to make sure this gets shared over to the Quilting Rockstars Facebook group. While I'm hitting share, will you also hit share? Um, it should be right there under the caption on your screen. Go ahead and share it out to your friends. If you have a quilting group that you're a part of here on Facebook, share it and just say, hey, come learn about free motion quilting with us. And the more of us that share this, the further it gets out and the bigger our happy little family of quilters grows, right? And we're all about more quilting for everybody. So go ahead and do that for me. Good morning, Tina. Hey, Vicki. Oh, Vicki, I don't know when you've tuned in, friend. I'm so glad you commented so I knew you were here. Finally made it to the beginning of a live session. Yay, Denise, and I was late, so sorry about that. Okay, so make sure you've entered our wonderful giveaway. I'll mention that again at the end. I said thank you to Gina. I gotta make sure I get through everything here on my list. Um, the quilting motifs that we are doing today, if you have looked over this week's blog post, which if you have not, there's a link for you in the caption of the video. You can either pull it up to be kind of toggling back and forth while I'm talking today, or you can read it later, whatever you prefer. Um, but you'll notice that I did three levels, levels of quilting. And it's basically, um, one of my favorite things to do as a creative and as a quilter is to put rules for myself. I like to limit myself and I have to learn how to play big 
within those rules. So a common example of this is when we choose to use a pattern, we're giving ourselves a rule for our quilt. We're going to follow this pattern, but with the fabrics, the colors, etc., we're going to play within it. Um, choosing colors for your quilt. You're set, giving yourself a set of rules and you have to play within those colors and fabrics. I do the same thing with my quilting. So the introductory level on the blog uses the motifs from my intro to free motion quilting class. It uses um, meanders, loopy meander, meanders, swirls, and switchbacks plus walking foot lines. So anything that's under that section of the blog, if you have taken my free online free motion quilting class, you're fully equipped to do those quilting plans, even if they look complicated. I promise you can do it. Um, if you've not taken Intro to Free Motion Quilting, it is a free online class available on demand. You'll see that there's a link in the caption that says classes. It's stringandstory.com slash classes. You'll be able to click through from there to sign up. It's free. So if you're looking at your quilts and you're going, I want to learn how to finish these, but I'm terrified. I don't even know where to start. Intro to Free Motion Quilting is where you start. Okay, it is, um, if you're trying to figure out how to finish your own quilts, it will get you set up on your machine. It'll tell you what you need, how to check your tension, and how to do those first motifs um, so that you can kind of overcome that fear. You've got this. You can do it. I promise. So even if you're sitting there going, yeah, Holly Ann, but I'm never going to be able to free motion. Yes, you are. Um, Elizabeth Gard, I don't know if you're watching this. I don't really know why you would be watching this, but it'd be super cool if you were. Elizabeth does the Just Want to Quilt podcast, but she mentioned in her episode yesterday with Andy Barney, which you should also all go listen to because Andy's a friend of mine. Um, but she talks about how she can't draw and she's worried that that's going to affect her ability to quilt. Elizabeth, you can do this. Okay, if you're like Elizabeth and you're like, I can't draw, I'll never be able to free motion quilt. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Okay, I see people commenting, so I'm going to interrupt myself briefly. Um, every rock star should, well, and here you go, right here, Gina. My cutter matches my mat. I hope you can see that on the screen. You should be able to. Ta-da! Look, I'm all matchy-matchy now. Um, Patsy, yay, you're here live! Hello, everybody, hello! Cindy, I love that your last name is Beer. That is so cool. I'm sorry your internet keeps cutting out, Marsha. Oh! Yes, Franya, you go Rockstar. Way to go, Rockstar. I'm so proud of you. Yay. Okay, so the intro level on the blog is, is part of that free class. So you'll learn everything you need in the free class in order to do quilting plans in the intro level. The moderate level uses the motifs, these motifs, from my beginner free motion quilting class. So these are my 10 favorite free motion quilting motifs. It's the four from um, intro plus six more. So if you've done intro and you're working on, whether you're working on this quilt here or you've got your own quilt that you're quilting along with us at home and you're like, I want to move beyond intro. Well, the next step is beginner free motion quilting. There's a link to that too from that class's link and it's 10 motifs. Now with these 10 motifs, you can finish any quilt you ever quilt. If you never learn another motif except for those 10, you can finish every quilt you ever make, which is really exciting, right? That you can buy one class and practice one set of skills and you could stop right there. Now, you're a rock star, so I don't think you're going to. I think you'll go on to learn some other motifs. But I just want you to know that's how that class is designed. But if you're like, I want to learn free motion quilting for utilitarian purposes only. I really just want to be able to finish my quilts. I don't really care if I like free motion or not. I just want to be able to finish my quilts. I have a class for you. Now this class is also the stepping stone if you want to go on to do all kinds of fancy quilting. If you want to be a rock star, a fully fledged, pin carrying, I can quilt anything rock star, then there's also a level of quilting plan for that and that class will be relaunching in September. So just to give you a breakdown of how that blog is laid out, um, that you can kind of pick the quilting motifs that suits your skill level and your comfort level. And that way you kind of know how I compartmentalize things in terms of where those motifs fall. Okay. Um, I know, Patsy, Wi-Fi can be such a, oh, I'm so sorry. Um, Patsy, if you go to either the String and Story page, so go to Facebook and type in String and Story, or go to the Quilting Rockstars group, it should be at the top of one of those two pages. It really should be at the top of both, but hopefully that'll help you find it on your iPad. Hey, Gayla! Um, it's your Labor Day weekend in Canada, so you aren't on the road, you're on the road to meet your, oh, that sounds so fun, Balsam Lake Provincial Park, that sounds beautiful. Yes, Franya, I want to see pictures. All right, guys, make sure that you're answering that question of the week about your favorite family vacation ever. I'm leaving on vacation Saturday. It's our first 
real vacation in like mm, two and a half years or so. Um, it's the first week long vacation and the first big family, so family including my parents in this, um, that we've taken since I was pregnant with Ian. So three years. I'm so excited. Like there are not words for how excited I am. I have a pile of books this tall that I'm taking with me. It's going to be great. All right, let's get to quilting. Oh, min while I'm mentioning vacation, there will not be a Facebook Live next week. Okay, I'm going to be at the beach <laughs> and I love you guys a lot, but I'm not doing this at the beach. <laughs> so what's going to happen next week instead, drum roll please, next Thursday there will be a blog that comes out instead of the normal Tuesday blog. Someone just signed up for intro, welcome, whoever that was, you probably are watching so you probably know who you are. Um, there will be a blog post that comes out next Thursday that reveals the next quilt along. So we'll be starting another quilt along at the end of September and I'm going to give you kind of a sneak peek at what that's going to look like and give you the fabric requirements. I got a request last week to publish the fabric requirements ahead of time. I thought that was a brilliant idea. So you still have a great excuse to check in with String and Story next Thursday and do check out the um, stories for the Facebook page or if you follow me over on Instagram, my Instagram stories because I'll be posting little fun things from the beach. So there's still plenty to tune into. Um, and if you just signed up for Intro to Free Motion Quilting for the first time, then it gives you a great week to practice your free motion quilting. Um, yes, yeah, so Teresa, I will be I will be publishing that early for you, dear. I'm so excited about it. Julie, Arizona, Arizona is so beautiful, and I've never ridden on a motorcycle, but I know people who do. So, all right, quilting. Today, guys, here's a little bit. If you haven't looked at the blog, here is a little snippet of some of... The quilting plans that I shared with you guys. These were the nine patch plans that I doodled out and I had so much fun drawing these. Here you can see four patch plans divided by level. These are all on the blog so I know it's not showing up super well. Don't panic. You can go look at still photos on the blog. Um, I'm seeing comments. Good morning, good morning. Disney World when your kids were little. That sounds so magical. I love that. So I had so much fun drawing these. I had so much fun coming up with complicated quilting plans. And then at the end of the day, I chose a really simple quilting plan. So I'm gonna talk you guys through that decision here on this quilt, okay? Let me make sure y'all can see my fingers perfect. Okay, so this is where I'm at on my Moda Bake Shop quilt. This is the Moda Bake Shop free summer quilt along, Camp Oda May. It was the choose your own adventure quilt along. There's links in the blog post. Um, I just got a great question. I'm sorry, I just made like the derpiest. Um, Denise, we're gonna be talking about granny squares when I get back from vacation. I just got your question. So I will be getting, I will, I'm getting there. I promise I'm getting there. Um, I think you're asking if I'm gonna stitch in the ditch on all of these, probably not. I rarely stitch in the ditch around things. Um, okay, so I answered that question, there we go. So there's a link to this pattern in the blog post. Um, I linked, I think, to the closing ceremony from camp and it has links to all the different rounds, right? So if you're wondering what this pattern is, that's what that is. Um, there were two options for this round of four patch and a nine patch. I chose the nine patch. And here's, here's kind of where this started for the blog this week. So for the blog this week, I included some very simple quilting plans and some very complicated quilting plans. Hey, Lydia! The complicated ones, um, quite frankly, will not work well on this quilt. So if you made this quilt, you're probably like, how the heck are you gonna do all those fancy feathers in these tiny little blocks? I'm not. However, I want these blog posts to be a resource for you for other quilts as well. So whether you're working on a different quilt at home, um, or whether you refer back to these blog posts in the future as inspiration for quilting plans, which I hope you will. That's what they're there for. You, you guys, I know there's a lot of talk now about like, don't take my ideas. I'm putting these ideas out there on the blog for you to take. Okay, so if you're looking at it going, I really like that quilting plan, but I don't want to rip her off. No, it's there for you to rip off. Like you can copy those quilting plans. So just a clarifying point there. Um, but I know that a lot of times, especially if you're a beginner quilter, you start with things like four patches and nine patches, and they're often a lot bigger than these here. And I want to give you an idea of how you can really use your quilting to enhance even very simple blocks on your quilts. 
On the other end of that, maybe you're a very accomplished piecer, but you're just getting started learning free motion quilting. It's very difficult emotionally to learn free motion quilting on a quilt like this that you've taken hours and hours and hours to piece. Now some of you are doing that and you are so brave and I am so proud of you. But for the most part, you might I think people tend to take a quilt top like this and they're like, I will get to that one in a minute. And you want to piece something simple to practice your free motion quilting. And that's where four patches and nine patches and these complicated quilting plans that I shared can come in handy. Because I want you to be able to open up your stash and pull out some 10 inch squares or pull out some, or some five inch squares or pull out some 10 inch squares and slap those things together and say, okay, I'm gonna visually consider these to be four patches and nine patches and I'm gonna learn how to work the space. You'll notice in these quilting plans, I talked about imagining seam lines um, and I didn't go into this in great detail because I have a whole class called How to Make a Quilting Plan that we go into a lot more depth of that. But seam lines are a guide. You don't have to abide by those, right? You can make up stuff. Um, so you may want to take your four patches and consider them as half square triangles. And maybe even as a diamond in a square. You might want to take your nine patch and consider them as half square triangles. And so I shared some quilting plans that you could use a simple kind of pencil line or even an imaginary line to pretend that those shapes are more complicated than they are and create secondary designs just with your quilting. I also talked about ways to just straight up ignore seam lines and create new shapes by quilting over existing seam lines with how you choose to shape your feathers, etc. Okay, so there's a lot of options with these and I want you to know that if you are a baby beginner quilter, um, you can take your simple practice quilt that you've just made and also practice your free motion quilting with some of those simpler motifs. Or if you're a very accomplished piecer but you're wanting to take a step back to learn some really beautiful free motion quilting techniques, these simple blocks are also great for that. So let me, I'm going to jump out and see if there's questions. Um, if you have questions about anything I just said, please drop it in the comments. I want to make sure that I answer questions as I go along. Also, I got a question about this recently and I want to, I mentioned it Friday night and I want to reiterate here as well. Um, if you are a baby beginner quilter, you just started cutting up fabric and putting it back together. Um, these classes exist to help you learn and grow, so don't be afraid to ask questions. That's why I get on here every Thursday and teach a little class for you guys. I want to make sure that there's lots of resources available. Right now we're focusing on free motion quilting, which maybe isn't super helpful for a baby beginner quilter, but... Make sure you jump into my Quilting Rockstars Facebook group. There's a link in the caption of this video. And every Friday night, I do String and Story Social Hour. And I get on at 8.30 Eastern, and I usually have a project I'm working on, and it's um, I'm giving tips and tricks as we go along, but it is a lot less focused than this Thursday morning class. And it's an awesome, awesome time for you to be jumping in and asking any kind of question you might have. I mean, even down to how do I safely change my rotary blade? How do I adjust my tension? How do I know that I'm using these cutting rulers right? All of those basic questions I'm thrilled to answer. I don't do a whole lot of specific teaching on those things right now, though I am thinking about creating a class in the future. Um, but I just want you to know the door is open for you to ask those questions. Please don't ever hesitate to ask questions around here. That's why String and Story exists, is to help you learn and grow in your quilting and to have a wonderful community around you to do it. So the Quilting Rockstars Facebook group, you can ask during live videos. Um, you can also just ask questions in the feed. There's 2.2 thousand rock stars in that group now. There's a lot of quilters that can come around you and encourage you and make sure you know everything you need, okay? All right, let's see, lots of questions. Um, Denise, oh, nine patch, okay, yes. Um, so will, so in the context of nine patch, I'm sorry, Denise, I didn't mean to sound like I was just putting you off if you were talking about this, but I just wanted you to know that we will be getting to the granny squares. Um, no, I'm not going to stitch in the ditch. <laughs> no. Um, quite frankly, I just am not that patient or that dedicated. Could there be an argument for choosing to do it? Yeah, probably. Is that going to make me do it? No. <laughs> um, you can file this under reasons why Holly Ann isn't a show quilter, maybe. Um, I, I just don't believe in doing extra stuff if I don't really need to do it. And I don't really feel a need to do it on this. Okay, I think this, um, oh Elizabeth, okay. Why I don't stabilize with ditch quilting? I'm not that patient 
and I tend to quilt my stuff to death. Not really to death, but I do a lot of quilting on my pieces. I don't leave a whole lot of negative or like unquilted space. So you can see over here, um, I left these triangles unquilted. Let me make sure you can see that. I left these triangles unquilted. These are four inch finished blocks, so it's half of that that is unquilted. Um, I did not stabilize it with ditch quilting. However, the way that I did my free motion quilting plan, um, there actually is a straight line edge about a quarter of an inch out. These ribbon candies come right up to the ditch and then right on the outside of that quarter inch line is a feather. So everything is stabilized. Um, I don't feel the need to also go in the ditch in addition to that. It's just one more step. Now if you wanted that look, if you wanted a really crisp look of that seam stitched down, you could do it. Um, but I don't feel the need for it, so I'm not. Now the other thing, and this center part of the quilt, let me scoot this up, can y'all see? Kind of, let me scoot it up some more. Um, here's another great example. So this, again, a four inch square here in the center. My quilting plan did a flower in the middle, and then I did these crisscross walking foot lines. Now all of these I had planned as separate steps. These do happen to have the same color thread, but I broke thread after the flower and then I quilted this. And then these ribbon candies um, in the outside are a whole different color of thread. So I broke thread between those steps. However, because I am obsessed with efficient quilting and I only break thread when I really have to, for example, on this flower, there was not a good way to leave the thread unbroken and exit the square without it feeling kind of obvious to me because I used navy thread on a white fabric. So I broke thread. But between these guys, I did not break thread. So what that means is I effectively ended up with stitch in the ditch around here just by having to travel. And because I work my very darndest not to break thread unless I absolutely must, I do a fair amount of travel stitching and that stabilizes things sufficiently. I'm in the seams enough just generally moving around that everything feels very stable to me. And again, I'm not leaving very large areas unquilted. These little stripes, these little triangles. Up here I'm going to be leaving these tiny little crosses unquilted. Um, this is I think three inches. Do I have a ruler? Let's see. I think these are three inches finished. Yeah, this is a three inch finished block. But I'm going to do ribbon or I'm going to do switchbacks and these squares around. And again, they're going to go right up to those ditches and hold everything in place. So I don't feel the need to add an additional um, round of stitching in the ditch when everything is already quite stable. So hopefully that answers your question. Let me know if you have a follow-up. Um, let's see. Scooting back up here. I see some good family vacations. Yellowstone National Park. I love Yellowstone so much. Um, you're going to see your grandma in North Carolina. Oh, I love that. Refrigerator filled with Coke. Man, you were living your best life. What a great vacation. Practicing on and off for about two years. Seriously, and you still can't get better. Robin, put some pictures up in the Quilting Rockstars Facebook group. I feel like we had this conversation recently about how your quilting really looked very good. Um, but I'm happy to help and offer tips if you're feeling stuck. Favorite family vacation, eight-year-old son to Disney. Oh, how special. Um, Cindy, you're welcome to add me to your quilting group. Um, I don't know how active I'll be. Let me put it that way. I'm active in a number of other groups already. So you're welcome to put me in there. So if you want to have the ability to tag me and stuff like that um, and ask questions, absolutely. Oh, you had trouble with your internet. Lydia, I'm glad you're back. Oh no, Debbie, I'm sorry about the internet. Um, so even at the very least, you wouldn't go between the borders. Um, no, I haven't had big issues with it not coming out straight. That's part of why I work from the center out. You'll especially notice that we're doing that on this medallion quilt. Um, because I'm moving out evenly in all directions and I seek to do that as much as possible on my quilts. Um, I don't have a whole lot of issues with it. What I do have issues with is if I get ahead of myself. So for example, last week, let me see if I can, we talked about skinny borders for our topic. And I thought about skipping over these nine patches and quilting the skinny border while I was on live with you guys. And I didn't, and here's why. If I move evenly out from the center, any little extra bits of give or a thread here, a thread there, you know, that didn't quite get pressed smooth, all that just moves out together 
and will eventually essentially fall off the edge of my quilt way out here you know I just keep on pushing and it kind of falls off the edge now where I get into trouble is if I skip ahead I run the risk of getting a bubble back in this border um, and then I end up with pleats so what would happen out here to, to take that to the actual borders of the quilt beyond just the rounds of the medallion if I were to stitch in the ditch here here and here before I actually quilt these I run the risk of there being a little bit of extra give in this seam that would have gotten pushed out evenly as I quilted thus keeping everything square right it's all moving the same um, but if I trap that by stitching this down I run the risk of getting a bubble in here and then I'm gonna end up with pleats as I quilt along so I just move from the center out nice and evenly and I've had no issues with it I really haven't again I'm not a show quilter and someone who is a show quilter may have a different answer for this may have different reasons why and may have different techniques for battling some of the challenges I just mentioned um, also if it's working for you and it ain't broke don't fix it so if you prefer to stitch in the ditch if it makes you feel better that stuff isn't going to be moving around that you're not expecting and you don't mind taking the time to do it go for it this is just what's worked for me um, and again if it ain't broke don't fix it I'm not feeling a need to add another step into my quilting process um, so I don't right but if you like how it's working for you then stick with it are you changing the thread color on the back when changing the top thread um Deborah let me think uh, I don't remember let me look yes it appears I am changing the bobbin thread <laughs> I'm a little embarrassed that I had to look at that at one point I had planned not to um, but I've just been having trouble with using different top and bobbin top and bobbin threads it used to never be an issue um, and all of a sudden like literally in all my machines it's not just the Eversones it's not just the singers if I'm not matching those top and bobbin threads I'm getting like weird stuff happening so I'm like eh, I just won't fool with it I'll match them and the back can be a work of art that'll be fine um, the same thing as the other person who can't draw Robin you're totally fine we we've got this okay so jump over into quilting rockstar show me some pictures let me know what you're tripping up on um, my solution for you is probably going to be to recommend that you draw and it's okay that you're not very good at drawing it's just to make your muscles and your brain exercise together so when you're drawing even if you feel like you're doing it poorly you're making these muscles and these muscles and these muscles all well actually these muscles if you're right-handed because it would be the opposite side of your brain but you're making all those things coordinate and that's a skill that you can develop so even if your first drawings you're like this is really horrifying my first feathers and ribbon candies and pebbles that I drew were horrifying and unfortunately I don't have that sketchbook candy or I would show you um but just even though you feel like you're bad at drawing doing it is going to help you improve but like I said inside the quilting rockstars Facebook group I got you girl we can work on this all day long um yes of course Elizabeth I'm happy to share my thoughts uh Lydia you tagged Patsy did I miss something did, did she ask a question that I missed Patsy ask it again if I missed it here we go oh no Patsy I'm so sorry I hope that you get I hope you get it working okay 30 minutes in let's start quilting first of all I need to change my thread color so y'all know if you've been around here for any length of time that I love where are my snips here we go y'all know I love my Aurifil 2600 I was piecing with it last night and a little teaser I was piecing the test blocks for the upcoming patterns ha 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 so just you know to make you guys a little crazy it's in progress you'll get to see it soon I'm so excited let's see let me put 2600 over there let's decide what thread we want okay so I use different navies in this quilt so I might use a different navy thread there's one option there's another option there's another option that one looks too dark I don't think I'm going with that one I think the navy that I want will be in here let's see I think that's gonna be my Ooh, maybe not let's see 
Oh, the one that I thought was too dark is the one we're going to go with. Look at that. Now, I know you may not have four navies that you can randomly pull out at the drop of a pen, but to whatever extent you are able to pull out a variety of threads um, and test them up against your quilt, do that, okay? Oh, let me do this one because I've actually opened the spool. There we go. All right. Um, let's see, 50 weight. Let me get a new bobbin. Now, I show you guys all this process on the video, and if you're wanting a super polished video, this may not be the place for you. But I show you all of this here on camera because I want you guys to see the real quilting process. I think sometimes we see beautiful, shiny videos of how to start with fat quarters and end with a free motion quilted quilt in like 17 minutes or less. And then when something takes us forever and nothing seems to go right, it's really discouraging. So I do all of this live here with you guys um, so that you can see when my thread breaks and you can see when my tension gets jacked up. And if you were here on Friday night, you saw me sew the back of my quilt to itself, which was legit kind of embarrassing, not gonna lie. That was not a shining moment in string and story history. But I show that to you guys because I know that's real life. And I want you guys to know that this is real life. And just because I'm here on a camera and I'm writing blogs and I'm doing all these things, I'm writing patterns, whatever, um, I don't want you guys to think that like magically nothing ever goofs up anymore. Goof ups still happen and we're all still in this together, okay? Let's wind this bobbin. Hey Rhoda! Tina, your quilting has been looking so fabulous. Kathleen, what a great question. What do I use for marking? That's, I will answer that while I'm winding this bobbin. Um, I have a couple of things I use. First of all, I do very little marking. I want to make sure you know that. Um, I was looking at Instagram. Who was it? Oh, I was, look, I was looking at Judy Madsen's feed on Instagram recently. Now, Judy Madsen's quilting is next level. She is a show quilter, for the record. I'm not, so we'll, we'll just go ahead and draw a line there, right? Um, but she does a lot of marking. I don't do a lot of marking. Again, this is not something I have a whole lot of patience for. I have two toddlers. When I'm in here, I gotta be quilting, man. Um, so I use a couple of things. What I do need to mark, sometimes I use a ceramic pencil like this one, or the less glamorous version is a chalk pencil from ye old big box craft store or your mother's old sewing basket, depending on if your mom was a sewist. Sometimes, once in a blue moon, I will use the water-soluble ink. I use this extremely sparingly. Extremely. Um, I will most likely to use this on something like a medium tone, like these yellows or these aquas, where ceramic or chalk is not gonna show up, right? always test it first to make sure it actually comes out and use as little as possible in case heaven forbid something goes wrong. All right, let me finish up this bobbin and then I'll talk normally. All right, that's full enough. It's making funny sounds. Um, the final thing that I just started using, oh, the other thing that I use, if I need to mark on white fabric, let's see if I have, it doesn't look like I have a wooden one here. I use a pencil on white fabric. Um, I prefer to use an actual wooden number two pencil whenever possible because I know that will come out. It's just graphite. It's a medium weight graphite. It's gonna be super gentle on your quilt. I use it, um, I like to use kind of a dull one so the edge is nice and soft. I don't wanna, I don't wanna really sharp point scratching up my quilt top. So um, occasionally water soluble ink, um, chalk or ceramic, graphite in the form of a number two pencil and the most recent addition to my marking arsenal is the Hera Slim. There should be, I think there's a link to it in this week's blog. If not this week, there's definitely one in last week's. And this is, you mark with pressure. So that's how I marked these um, woven lines down here. Let's see, where can y'all see it? There you go. So there's these woven lines and I marked these with a ruler by just creasing them with my Hera marker. I marked them all at once. I quilted this over the, a period of like, a week, like I took my sweet time on it. I could still see all my lines. It was awesome. All right, any other questions? Yeah, Lydia, 
it's amazing how much things like our feathers evolve, right? You know what? I think I have here. I'll find my first feather for you guys. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you a walk down memory lane. Now, I'm also going to be, I'm going to be extra bold, and I will tell you, this feather was March 2017. Do some math on that. It's not that long ago. Okay, here you go. It's my first feather right there. Um, the stem is super thick. I did a lot of retracing. Um, my, like, fronds of my feather don't overlap each other. And frankly, it looks like I drew it in second grade. But I practiced and I kept drawing. And let's see if this will show up for you guys. <clears throat> Here's some feathers I did last week. Okay. Can y'all see those? So in, you know, however many months that is, less than 18 months, um, I went from not being able to quilt a feather to being able to quilt really any feather I want to, frankly. Yes, I love my hair up a straight line. <laughs> what I'm not, yeah, Elizabeth, amazing, shocking. I'm not perfect, what? Oh, the horror. Yeah, no, <laughs> I make, I make no presumptions about being perfect around here. So far from it. All right, let's get my quilting foot on, my pins out of the way. I love that my ever sewn quilting feet came in a little box because I don't lose feet anymore. I always know where they are. Favorite vacation was Disney. Won it in a raffle. That's so special, Rhoda. I love that. Okay. Now my video is frozen, so I'm going to hit refresh. All right, let's get this guy threaded up. Now I mentioned at the top, I'm going with a super simple quilting plan on this. And there's a couple of reasons for that. One, the nine patches, I actually stitched them as crosses, so mine are not actually nine patches, um, are very small on this quilt. And I didn't want to fool with trying to do something super fancy in a teeny tiny space, right? Let's see. Okay. I didn't want to fool with doing something super fancy in a teeny tiny space. The other part of this is I was thinking through what I'm going to do, and I mentioned the granny scores earlier what I'm going to be doing in these granny squares. Back here in the star, I finished with those fancy feathers that I just showed you. I'm thinking I will probably do some sort of feather in this skinny border that overflows into the negative space behind part of those granny squares. And then in the granny squares themselves, I'm thinking about doing like a feather in the center um, and then some continuous curve quilting, you know, the swoops in the outside. And what I had thought about doing over here was co continuous curve quilting. I was like, well, I don't want them to be the same. And what I realized is that if I'm doing a bunch of feathers over here, and I did a bunch of feathers over here, those are very fancy, very curvy, very complicated, very dense, right? And as much as I love dense quilting, I wanted there to be some balance. I don't, I don't want cardboard. Even with cotton thread, it's really hard to get cotton with card, with um, cardboard with cotton thread and a cotton bat, but I wanted to make sure I left some floof. So I decided I think I should go simpler. So I chose a straight line design. Those switchbacks will be, they will give the appearance of straight lines. Um, and I'm gonna leave the crosses unquilted. They're beautiful bright colors. They will pop out and be, be very pretty. It will look like a little fence around this center star. Um, and it'll just give a little extra breathing room in this round, the same way that these star points did in the center. And then when I go to town up here in the granny squares, there will be a good visual contrast made between the three levels of this quilt so far, right? So that's where my logic is on that. Let me get my tension tested and we will start quilting. Um. <laughs> Lydia, I love that. A curve with the warts. Oh, Lydia, I just love your honesty so much. Marianne, I'm so glad you're here. Well, you haven't missed any quilting. Just a lot of chatting and tips and question answering, which is always great fun too. All 
All right, pro tip, remember to put your presser foot down. <laughs> I've forgotten that three times this week. Like, so annoying to have to um, go back and unrip, or and to rip out because I forgot. All right, press your foot down. I'm testing my tension on this scrap. I'm gonna do some curves, I'm gonna do some points. <coughs> Excuse me. And then we're gonna take a look at it. Looks pretty good, but I did not slow my hands down enough to see those stitches very well. So I'm gonna try again because I wanna be able to see my stitches more and make sure the tension's working. Where's my, come here little bobbin thread. All right, press her foot down, let's try again. See if take two gives me the info I want here. So my top looks very good. My back looks good too. How exciting. I'm gonna get under my light here for a second. This is a daylight slim line. If you're not familiar with this light, I want to look at these a little more closely because I want to make sure I'm not getting any tugs at these points. Yeah, okay, perfect. You can normally eyeball it without the light during the daytime, but I've got navy fabric and navy thread. Okay, so always check your tension with a new bobbin, with a new spool of thread. Um, if you've broken thread and you are restarting for some reason, especially if you've stepped away from your machine, check your tension. If you have not free motion quilted today, check your tension. If you left your machine on because you were going to go to the bathroom, but then you ended up getting a snack and checking the mail and talking to your best friend on the phone for 30 minutes, then you come back to your still on machine, check your tension, okay? It is worth the time it takes to not have to backtrack and do it when you realize that the back of your quilt looks janky, okay? Do areas of the block that are less densely surrounded stand out? Yes. We talk about this a lot in How to Make a Quilting Plan, Rhoda, my um, newest online class. And yes, you can create a lot of dimension in your quilt by what you choose to leave unquilted. Um, if you are familiar with kind of the depth concepts in visual art, you've got a foreground, a midground, a background. You create that in visual art by making the things you want in the front bigger and the things you want in the back smaller. So for example, if you're familiar with Bob Ross's paintings, the trees up here are a lot bigger than the trees up here. And to create that 3D effect on a flat canvas, he paints the closer trees lower and bigger and the further away trees smaller and higher, right, to get this effect. You can see this with my hands, bigger hand, smaller hand, right? Um, we can do the same thing in our quilting with density of quilting. Most quilted falls way back here. Not quilted is way up here visually. And remember, we're talking about like less than a millimeter of depth difference unless you're double batting, right? We're not talking about huge depth differences if you're using a standard cotton bat. But your eyeball can tell, which is crazy. Crazy, y'all. And then if you have something that's quilted a little bit, your eyeball files it in the middle. So you can create some really cool visual effects with how you do this. Now, one of the ways we see this show up a lot is if you have blocks that the corners come together to form a secondary design. And let's say that this is made with two colors. It's a blue and white quilt. And you know that there's this block, but every time you look at the quilt, all you can see is this secondary design. Well, the quilter may have done that with how they chose to free motion quilt those blocks. These main blocks, maybe more densely quilted. And if this 
secondary pattern that's created is less densely quilted or more creatively quilted, that might be the thing that jumps out and smacks you in the face, right? So it's just really cool that we can kind of play with the eyeball and play with the overall effect of the quilt by how we choose to quilt it. Again, I talk about this a ton in how to make a quilting plan. It's a really um, big topic. There's a lot to be said there. So I have a whole class for it. Um, Tina, once in a blue moon, um, I will turn a practice piece into a cat bed or a cat quilt. Um, I don't know. This is big enough that it could have a life of its own. This is a... I, I think this is a fat quarter. That might be bigger than a fat quarter. Um, but I didn't do anything pretty on it. If I do something, if I, you know, if I, pra if I'm learning a new motif and my practicing is pretty cool, then it might get turned into something. Um, most of them are sitting in a box over to one side that I, so that I can pull them out like I did a minute ago and show you guys something. Um, there's also not that many at this point if that makes sense so um, I do most of my practicing on quilts if I want to practice a new motif that I'm not super sure that I'm that good at it yet I work on a quilt for my kid or I work on a charity quilt that's going to a kid um, because kids understand the concept of practice and they're not gonna look at that and go oh my gosh it's imperfect how horrifying they're gonna look at it and go look this quilter was learning right um, yeah, so, but other things, you know, you can do cat mats, place mats. If you have little kids, like, this would be a great place mat for me to use with my toddlers because I don't care if they get food on it, right? It's just some fabric that I toss together to practice stuff on. So, you definitely could do stuff with it. I don't always bother. Here's the biggest reason why. I hate binding. Turning that into something requires me to bind it. I don't want to bind it. Call me lazy, I know. Um, what, what quilting pattern, Kathleen? Um, go back and look at last week's blog post about quilting skinny borders. And I gave some good suggestions last week um, that I think you'll find helpful. Also, there will be some string piecing coming up soon. Not going to give away any more than that, but it will be in something that we'll end up quilting together. So, you know. That could be helpful. I just got a very long text. Hang on just a second, guys. All right. Need to make a cat quilt. Um, Teresa, my friend Pam makes table topper size quilts that she puts on top of her pile of works in progress because she has three cats and they're always in and out of her sewing room and she literally makes cat mats that go on top of her quilt tops and the stuff she's in the middle of doing. So when the cat lays on it, the cat hair is getting on the cat mat and not the whip. Yeah, and my long arm practice pieces, those have gotten turned into quilts for the cats. That then if they need to have a hairball on it, I'm not going to have a conniption over it, right? Um, hey, Lynn! Yay! I know, Pam gets all the credit for that. It wasn't my idea, unfortunately. All right, let me get this properly up under my needle. Now, if you are noticing that there are not very many pins... In this quilt that is because I used my homemade spray base and then I just use enough pins to give me peace of mind the spray base is really doing the job of keeping everything together this really is a very large quilt y'all it's like 84 inches square or some nonsense I'm trying to make this so that you can kind of see what I'm doing the motifs I'm doing today switchbacks as I mentioned are inside my free intro to free motion quilting class so if you're, you know, if you saw the picture on Instagram or if you saw the um, quilting plans in the blog and you're like, well, she's doing, where's my bobbin thread? Hang on, I gotta find my bobbin thread. Come on, little bobbin thread. I think I made the mistake of hitting my thread cutter again. Shoot, I gotta, I hit my thread cutter and now my bobbin thread's too short. So hang tight. Um, so switchbacks are included in that free intro class. So if you're wanting a detailed video, about how to do switchbacks, just sign up for that class. Um, if you're looking at the blog and you're seeing in the moderate level some of those motifs, detailed videos, up under my needle videos, doodle pages, and all the tips I can muster for those motifs are included inside my beginner free motion quilting class. 
If you're looking at the feathers, there is an intro to feather blog post, but we also do a lot of feather work inside Rockstar Status, which is the class that we'll be relaunching in September. So just hang tight if you're interested in that. Pets love batting. Oh no. She'll be laying on it when you get, yeah, I close my door and don't let my cats in for that reason. It makes me crazy. Um, I also do a fair amount of quilting for kids with cancer and I'm just like, I don't, I don't need to deal with the cat hair. Okay. Finally got our bobbin thread. Now what I did there, if you're new to free motion quilting, is I held onto my top thread, I lowered my needle, I raised it back up and then I tugged and it pulls the bobbin thread up so that now I can hold those off to one side as I start quilting. Kind of like when you're garment sewing, you know, you kind of hold them out to the back. I'm going to trim them so they're not 12 inches long. Um, but that way you can knot them and bury them later. Now I'm doing, these are crosses. I'm doing switchbacks in the negative space, which let me show you guys. Where did I put my knit bugs? Here we go. Yeah, no door to close there. I'm sorry, Teresa, but you can make mats. That will help. So here is the quilt play that I'm using. Well, I got to go around if y'all are going to see it. Can you see the white lines in the navy parts? Very simple quilting plan. So the way I'm going to do this without breaking thread is I'm going to do the switchbacks down one side all the way around. I have cornerstones on this quilt. Let's see if I can hold it up so you can see. You can see I have cornerstones on here. Um, there they are. This little um, tulip. So. When I'm coming around the inside, I'm going to do switchbacks down. So I'll do switchbacks and then I'll have to like travel and ditch the next one. And I'm going to work my way down one side and then I'll just jump the corner over here and continue. So I'll go all the way around the inside and then I'll travel in the ditch to get to the outside and I'll do the same thing. So to our conversation earlier, I'm going to end up with a good amount of stitching in the ditch just because of the way I'm going to travel so that I can go all the way around this twice without breaking thread, unless I run out of bobbin thread, which might be my downfall. Lydia, I don't know how you do it with a toddler that can get into your sewing area. Um, yes, oh my gosh, Lydia, my two-year-old, Ian, the younger one, loves the Singer 66. That's the only sewing machine that he can get to. Um, you know, that I'm not watching him because it's in the playroom. And I always have to check my tension on that machine because he just goes over there and fiddles with it. And I'm like, Ian, you're making me crazy. All right, quilting gloves on. These are teeny tiny switchbacks, guys. So it's going to be interesting to see how this goes. Make sure, oh, and you see that? My foot was up. So I'm going to go ahead, put my foot back down before I take any more stitches. There we go. Now you'll notice my needle is moving a lot faster than my hands so I can get nice pretty stitches. Yep, and sure enough, here I go. I'm gonna go in the ditch so I can go down to the next one. Which effectively, I just trace that whole section of that nine patch. Here we go. Next up. As I'm doing this, go ahead and drop any questions you have in the comments. I will check them in just a minute. Make sure you're sitting up straight as you quilt. You want to be over your sit bones so your back is nice and tall and your shoulders are relaxed and down. And you'll notice I'm moving my quilt a lot. I want to make sure that the weight is nice and distributed, the bulk is distributed, and I like my quilts to flow uphill because I have this nice big table right here. So I'm starting with the weight in my lap, and as I move down the row, it will get easier because this quilt's going to move up onto that table. Making sure I didn't miss any questions. Oh, your kids are grown up. Yeah, I have a two-year-old and a three-year-old, Teresa. It's just chaos. Just total chaos.
See, do you see where my hands are? That my thumbs are almost at my needle and my fingers are extending past my needle. That means I'm out of my sweet spot. My sweet spot to be quilting is right between my hands. And as I progress this quilt, I moved out of my sweet spot. So I'm going to stop my needle and I'm going to reposition my quilt and my hands. It's going to minimize drag on the needle and it's also going to minimize drag on my body. You raised five boys, Teresa. My hat is off. We have two. I love them. I love having boys. I love being a boy mom. We might only have two. <laughs> I don't know for sure yet. <laughs> but as of right now, I'm like, two feels good. Two feels real good. Helen Ann, I love your name. Oh my gosh, I'm so glad you're here. Uh, five and a half inches, Pat. It's not very big. <laughs> this quilt is about 84 inches square. That's why we just take our time. And for those of you who did the Motivate Shop quilt and you're going, my quilt isn't, ooh, something just happened. Oh. Did you catch that? I heard something happen in my machine. Let's feel underneath. Yep, my tension went wonky because I came out of my guide. Um, for those of you who did the Motivate Shop quilt, and you're like, mine did not finish that big. I added some borders on the outside. Make sure my, I'm not sure what just happened, but we're going to investigate. Yep, I had something cattywampus happen underneath. Let's. Oh, I got a big old thread nest. Ooh, look how exciting. So my thread came out of my guide up at the top. And I'm pleased to report that the other switchbacks look just fine. So I just need to unpick this guy. I'm going to bring my light over here again. Sorry, guys. I try not to use this one when I'm on camera because I feel like it's a bit blinding for y'all. But I want to be able to see what I'm doing. This is so interesting. I don't know when I've had a thread nest like this. Here guys, full disclosure, look at this. So my thread came out of the guide on my machine and I got a big old knot. That's real pretty, isn't it? Let's see. Bonus, hang on, I missed something. What's the bonus planning time? I missed the first part of that comment, guys. You had two and have had three. Yeah, so you were just in it, Teresa. Four, five, five, eight, and ten. Oh my heavens. Oh my heavens. Pat, how big is the thread on your machine? Oh, bonus planning time. Oh, I'm so sorry about your surgery, Nancy. Oh. That sounds so difficult. Yeah, Marianne, I am so thankful that we have all boys. Now, y'all might be freaking out a bit. I'm just going to cut this thread nest out, and then I will unpick enough to be able to bury my threads, because there is a knot in the middle of it that I am not going to fool with. No, I did not cut the backing of my quilt, in case you were worried. Okay. Two boys, five girls, you'll take your boys anytime. Bev, how's the kitty doing? Same as yours. Pat, you can do it. The, the center will be the hardest. Take your time on the center and don't rush. Um, but you can totally do it. That's part of why I'm breaking this up over a bunch of weeks so that we can quilt it together. Um, and it gives everybody recovery time in between weeks. So what I'm doing there is I'm just gently tugging on my top thread to bring the bobbin thread up so that I can pluck these stitches. Nice and gently so I don't do any damage to my top, which is going to be difficult on this curve where the stitches are very, very small.
Like I said, difficult on this curve. Okay, I think that's as far back as I'm getting it. That's gonna be a very tight tail to bury, but it'll be better than that big old nasty thread nest. My goodness gracious. All right, so in light of that, let me get this back in position. And I'm gonna re-thread my machine. Clearly I did not catch the thread guide sufficiently for having issues like that. Let's see. Um, usually time cross because not good. Motion quilting. Can you tell me how you get all the layers to stay where you want them to? Absolutely, Nancy. I use um, homemade spray based, which is made from flour, salt, water, and rubbing alcohol or vodka, depending on your preference. Um, and I essentially glue the layers of my quilt together. There's a whole blog post about it. If you go to stringandstory.com over to the blog, so you can even just click through the link in the caption that goes to this week's blog. On mobile, it'll be at the bottom. On desktop, it's the sidebar. Under my featured blog post, you'll see the homemade spray base post. It's a very easy recipe. Um, it does take a little bit of patience with the basting of your quilt because everything has to dry in between layers. Um, but it keeps everything very smooth and you don't end up with puckers on the back. It's absolutely amazing. And it's a lot cheaper than store-bought spray base, which is how I originally discovered it and started using it and then shared it with all of you guys because it has totally changed just everything because pin basting I had so much trouble getting everything to stay stable and with store-bought spray based stuff still didn't stay totally stable and that stuff is so expensive press her foot down um oh yeah Lynn nothing goes to plan around here like literally nothing <laughs> I just move on <laughs> best vacation ever in progress right now that's amazing um, yeah, it does. Here, Marianne, I'll show you. I will be very careful not to shake it as I bring it over. Here's a batch that I made last week. Hopefully you'll be able to see this. Okay, so if you can see, here's the, like, the thick part and here's the alcohol at the top. So before I use it, I just shake it up real good and mix it all right back together. Oh, I'm getting an error message for my charger. There we go. So yes, it separates. Just shake it back up. Let's see. All right, I think I got that question. Good questions, guys. I love all of these. Keep them coming. And I'll get back to these switchbacks. I'm going to do switchbacks for like five more minutes, and then I will run back down through my list of reminders for you guys, and then we'll call it a day, because I'm going to guess that we all need to go eat lunch. Well, if you're on the East Coast, anyway. <laughs> if you are elsewhere, you may be well past lunch or well before lunch. Notice as I'm quilting, you'll see me just subtly adjust my shoulders. That's just making sure that I'm holding them down. I don't want my shoulders up here like this. Oh, let me get this back out of y'all's view. I'm so sorry. There we go. That'll be more even for you guys. So I want to make sure my back is nice and tall. I'm up over my sit bones. And my shoulders are back and down and not scrunched up around my ears. That's how you get neck pain, is by scrunching your shoulders up around your ears. And yes, I know that from experience. Lots and lots of experience. Again, I'm going to pause. I'm going to reposition everything. Make it nice and slow. Oh yes, Lynn, it's already evening time there. Um, have I had issue with my nozzle getting clogged? I don't think so. Let me think. I mean, I do kind of rinse it out if I'm pouring a new batch in. I've had it come out clumpy instead of in like a mist. That's definitely happened and I just keep squirting and it sorts itself out. But no, I really haven't. That's an interesting question, Lydia.
everything that's in it is quite water soluble so if you're having that issue I think you could just soak your nozzle down in a bowl of water for a while and then run just some regular water through it and it should clean it out pretty easy oh interesting did you try like soaking it or do some vinegar vinegar will break just about anything down I don't know that's an interesting question Lydia Another question, based on, um, based on your culture, would be a good idea for you to start something like a table runner. Um, your left hand from cancer, so your left, do not have much web space between them. Oh, these are great questions, Nancy. Yes, if you're brand new to free motion quilting, start with a practice sandwich or a block or a table runner. That's a great plan. Um, so you're saying it's hard for you to lay your hand like this. Is your hand more, well, is it your thumb and forefinger? So it's not super flat. That should be fine. I mean, half the time I use the side of my hand anyway just to get it out of the way. So you could even put your hand like this and guide. Now, if I try to do that right now, it's going to look a little funky because I'm not super used to it. Or you could do your hand like this, kind of cuffed. Um, but you'll be learning that way. So your body will be used to it and it shouldn't be a problem at all. The other things you can use, um, you can see I'm wearing gloves. They also make little quilting pads. They're like little ovals that literally are made for you to kind of cup with your hands to move. So you could consider using that under your left hand as well. And then use your right hand flat. And that would require less dexterity from your left hand, but still give you a good grip on your quilt. Go to your local farm supplier and buy their chemical sprayer. Oh, that's a great tip, Rhoda. You got mad and threw it away. <laughs> Lydia, high five. <laughs> I love your honesty. Oh, Lydia, this is why we're friends. I love it so much. Um... Yeah, I got my sprayers at Target for like three bucks. You can also order them on Amazon. And they're cheap enough that yeah, if you get mad at them, just throw them away. Now my dear friend, uh, Kate, if she watches this, is gonna have a conniption at me telling you to just throw something away. I'm sorry, Kate. But sometimes, you know, you just gotta do what you gotta do, man. Just chugging along. All right, I'm gonna go down in my ditch and then I'm gonna go through my reminders. All right, so I made it about halfway down. Y'all probably can't see the texture from there, but you'll just have to trust me that it's looking super cool. I will put pictures up soon. Um, thanks for those hints, absolutely. Yes, please wait till your shoulder is all healed. Um, thank you guys for joining me for this. Let me run through my reminders for you guys before I let you go. <clears throat> Excuse me. First and foremost, the most important way that you can just like the most important and easiest way that you can say, hey, thanks for this live video is by clicking the share button because by sharing it out to your friends and to other quilters, more people learn about string and story and learn about my classes and my patterns and everything we have going on here. And I love, love, love having as many quilters as possible tune in on Thursdays. I do this class each Thursday to help you guys to answer questions to show you guys real life quilting um, to show you my thought process and how I just work through these things. I love sharing that with you guys. So if you could also share, that would be absolutely phenomenal. It's just a great way um, to support these videos and to make sure that more people become part of the String and Story community. I see that a number of you have already hit share. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Now that you've hit share, um, as a sweet little gift to me, I have a gift for you. This week's giveaway is Margaret Goes Modern by my friend Frances Dowell. There's a link in the bottom of the caption uh, to learn more about Frances. You can read my interview with her. And Frances is generously giving away a copy of her newest quilt fiction book. This is a book of short stories. Um, it came out several months ago. I'm taking mine with me to the beach. I'm so excited to sit in the sand and read it. And I asked Frances, since I'm going to be gone to the beach, if we could do an extra special giveaway. And she said yes. So you have two weeks to enter this giveaway. If you're here right now, go ahead and enter by answering the question 
in the caption of this video, which is what was your favorite family vacation? I will choose a random winner the night before our next Facebook Live. On that note, let me pull out my calendar to make sure I get the dates right. Next Thursday is September 6th. Oh, I just realized I put this wrong in the caption and I will update it. I said you had to enter by September 5th and that is not accurate. You have to enter by the 12th because next Thursday is September 6th and I will have my tushy out in the sand on the beach at 11.30 a.m. Eastern. So there will be a blog that goes up announcing the next quilt along on Thursday. So the fabric requirements and a little sneak peek of that. It's going to be another fun quilt along that we do on Friday nights together. If you're like, what quilt along? What happens on Friday night? That's inside the Quilting Rockstars Facebook group, which is a free Facebook group for all of you, where we can hang out and share pictures and just enjoy more being together quilting. And each Friday night at 8.30 p.m. Eastern, we have social hour. And I love to have a little quilt along going in social hour. So we piece the blocks together over several Friday nights, and then we quilt the quilt together. So that when we do a quilt along here at String and Story, you get a finished quilt, not just another top to add in that to be quilted pile, right? So the fabric requirements and all of that and a link to go ahead and purchase the pattern will be coming out next Thursday, the 6th. The next live video here will be on Thursday, September 13th. I'm making sure that I get this right. So you actually have till the 12th to enter this giveaway. That means there's till the 12th for your friends to enter too. So make sure you share this so your friends can enter. And I will update that in the caption. All kinds of woohoo. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, hold on, Lydia. You had a question. Are you quilting two of the patches together? No, I'm doing them separately. I thought about doing them together, but I'm not. I'm doing them separately. Great question. Um, I'm so excited about this next quilt along. Like I said, that's going to come out next Thursday. Our next live will be here at the 13th. If you're in the Quilting Rockstars Facebook group already, yes, we are having social hour tomorrow night at 8 30 p.m eastern it'll be the final one before i go on vacation which means there will not be one on the 7th if you're following along with that and i will put up reminders i'm not gonna just ghost for the whole week i've got some little things that i'll be putting up for you guys over the course of the next week um, and i will put up a reminder that we're not having these live videos i just want to also tell you guys verbally now um is there anything i've forgotten lydia have i forgotten anything hawaii four times italy Quebec, Canada. Love, love, love. All right, anything else I've forgotten, guys? Hopefully not. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Make sure you check out today's blog. Make sure you check out the interview with Francis. Don't forget to share. Don't forget to answer the questions so you'll be entered to win this giveaway. And I will see you guys, um, if you're in the Quilting Rockstars Facebook group, I'll see you guys tomorrow night. If you're not in the Quilting Rockstars Facebook group, go click to join. There's a link in the caption of this video. We would love to have you. Just answer the questions that I ask. Um, I think it asks, have you registered for intro? And what do you want to learn about quilting? And I ask those questions, one, to make sure you know that Intro to Free Motion Quilting exists, and two, to make sure you're not a robot. So go join up with us, and I'll see you inside the Quilting Rockstars Facebook group tomorrow, Friday night at 8.30 p.m. Eastern, and then I'll see you back here in two weeks. Okay, everybody, have a wonderful Thursday. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for your great questions and all your participation. Y'all are absolutely the best, and I love spending time with you guys.